Now here's a piece of, shall we say, retro tech that used to come in handy when needed. It's the, what is it? It's the ComWorld Digital Video Converter System sold by World Gift Center Inc. Yeah, this one's model number is CMD850. What does this say? Digital Video Converter System, NTSC to PAL conversion 525 to 625 line. AC cam to PAL conversion 625 to 625 lines. AC cam PAL to NTSC conversion 625 to 525 line. Yeah, now those of you who have absolutely no idea what this was for, uh, there used to be a time television standards was a thing, also called television formats. There was PAL and NTSC, PAL had its own resolution, NTSC had its own resolution, uh, and also frame rate. But uh, yeah, I know many people used to have these stories about, say they are from England, or from South Africa and they travel to America and they buy themselves their all these nice videos that they don't find in their own countries and they bring them back to their countries and then their own video machines and televisions will not play back those videos it just shows all scrambled uh, signals and whatnot and sometimes they didn't understand what are the tapes faulty but uh, no, it's because those videos were recorded in NTSC and their home countries use PAL. So that was usually people's nasty introduction to television standards. Uh, was there a way to convert NTSC to PAL or PAL to NTSC? Yes, there was. Devices like this could do that. Uh, let me show you here what it looks like. What you would do, there's the back of it, first of all. There's the switch. Uh, uh, I love these old switches, or well, not old necessarily, but I do love these shiny metal switches that sort of have, have like a little pin that you push up. You hear when it goes click. Yeah, it just feels like a real switch. I don't like all these other switches that you just press and you don't know did you press it or didn't it? Uh, you, it doesn't make a sound or whatever. Anyway, what you would do is, you see there's an S-Video and an RCA input and there's an RCA and an S-Video output. So, what you would do is, you take your source video, the one that you want to convert, say it is PAL, and you would plug it in there or there, or there and uh, then on the top you would select, let me just stand closer, and then here on the top you would select See, there's your input. Usually it, it could be selected automatically. Okay, but there's not a signal now. But anyway, you will select it if it selects it wrong. Yeah, it won't go to auto now. Uh, but anyway, and then there's your output switch. You select, you want it PAL or PAL M or PAL N or NTSC 3.58 or NTSC 4.43. Yeah. That's how you would select your in and out signals. And then this device will send out the signal that you selected, NTSC or PAL or whatever. Well, yeah, that's basically all you can select, NTSC or PAL. Uh, different NTSCs and different PALs, yeah. I don't even know what the difference was between those. Those various PALs and the various NTSCs. NTSC 3.58 was basically the most common one. But uh, then of course you need a VCR or a DVD recorder that can record that NTSC signal. You also cannot record that with your PAL VCR or DVD recorder. Yeah, what was also just important to know is that if you plug in a source into your RCA in, it will come out of the RCA out. You cannot then expect the signal to come out of the S video if, he, if your source went in there, if you wanted the better quality S video out, then you should plug it, plug your source in also into the S video in. Quite a nice little device, nifty device. Uh, the quality of the conversion was quite good for the price range. Uh, what it did is, for example, if you want to convert PAL to NTSC, is it would sort of like blend different frames together to make up the difference in the frame rate 
because for NTSC you would need 29 point... I don't even remember what. Almost 30 frames per second, but not quite. So the machine had to make 25 frames per second, 29 point something frames per second, and it did that quite well. Quite smooth motion, it blended some frames into each other so that you would still get smooth enough motion when you converted the frame rate. Uh, the video quality, it was okay, I, I couldn't complain. Although if you say for example you had computer graphics or something that really had bright colors, it wouldn't come out that bright. If for example you had a lime green, bright lime green character, it would come out a much darker green, darker dull green in the NTSC converted signal. Or uh, yeah, bright red would sometimes come out sort of like a more dull maroon. But uh, yeah, it basically got the job done. This machine wasn't much to complain about unless you wanted to spend a lot more on a lot fancier equipment. This thing did have its uses and uh, it did a good enough job I would say. Not really network broadcast quality but for home use it was more than adequate. Personally I just used it for conversion first of videos and later of DVDs so that I could send them to my overseas friends or business colleagues. But today of course that's all history now. Usually we just send everything over the internet and nobody has problems watching different standards, NTSC or PAL. I mean, resolutions are now basically standardized. HD is always 1920 by 1080. And 4K is always 3840 by 2160, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't matter if it's in PAL or NTSC. The frame rate might still differ, but yeah, basically, as far as I know, all digital televisions can play any video back now, any video signal. Doesn't matter the resolution or the frame rate anymore. So I suppose this is now just a nice piece of memories of the past and its struggles. Alright, thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video and if you have not done yet so, hit the subscribe button below. I'll see you in the next one.